The subtitle of A Peculiar Glory is How the Christian Scriptures Reveal Their Complete Truthfulness. And so you can hear in the subtitle that this is a book about the self-authentication or the self-attestation of the scriptures. And one of the reasons for writing a book from that angle is so that there could be exposed the Bible's own understanding of how the simplest of person can come to have complete confidence that the Bible is the Word of God and the Bible is therefore true, not just scholars, but simple folks who, when they read the Bible, can see in the Bible, by the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives, a kind of divine, peculiar glory standing forth from the Bible, authenticating the Bible, just like when the sun rises, you look at it and you say, the sun is risen. You don't need any long series of arguments from physics to prove the sun is up. You saw that the sun is up. And I know that when you approach the Bible this way, uh, people scratch their heads and they're just not quite sure what is that experience you're talking about. And so one of the things I do is try to draw out analogies in the Bible to things we've perhaps thought about a little more. For example, we, we've all heard the heavens are telling the glory of God from Psalm 19. And we all know that in Romans 1, Paul says that people suppress the knowledge of God and they don't glorify him or thank him, even though in their deepest being, they know that he's God, he says. So they know that the heavens are telling the glory of God. So my question for people is, so do you see the glory of God when you look at the universe, when you look at the way God has put the world together. And the brightness of the sun is not the same as the glory of God. Lots of people who don't even believe in God see the brightness of the sun, but they don't see through the brightness of the sun to the brightness of the creator of the universe. So even there in that analogy of nature, we know that there is a kind of seeing in and through the natural seeing that the Bible expects us to do when we are looking at nature. Same thing with regard to Jesus when he came into the world. So he says in John 1, uh, or John says, we beheld him the glory as of the only son from the father. Well, Judas didn't, the Pharisees didn't. I mean, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and said, I'm revealing to you the glory of God. And the Pharisees response, let's kill him. So clearly people can look look at the Son of God right in the face and not see the Son of God. And so there is a seeing in the seeing. Same thing with regard to the Gospels. You've got nature, you've got incarnation, you've got Gospel from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 where it says, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the Gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. So when the gospel is opened, the death for sins, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when that gospel is faithfully opened, the Bible says there is a glory of Christ that emerges from it, shines forth from it. And if it weren't for the God of this world blinding the minds of unbelievers, we would see it, we'd fall on the ground, we'd know this is of God. And so there are three analogies of what I'm trying to do in the book with regard to the scriptures. Seeing glory through natural glory in nature, seeing glory through the glory of the incarnation, seeing glory through the telling of the gospel, and then I just extend it out to scripture and argue that the whole Bible as God's word has a peculiar glory that stands forth from it. And therefore, the simplest person who is spiritually open to God can have strong and sure confidence that the Bible is God's word and therefore completely truthful.